This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning's courses are easy to navigate, and their structure is much more straightforward than traditional training programs. Try it for yourself, and then bring the whole team along. For individuals, use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT Pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. I'm, I fly a lot in commercial airplanes, and I always have window seats, and I always shoot pictures out the window. And I've been told, I don't know if it's true or not, but I have more photos of geography shot from above in Wikipedia than anybody. And I didn't put any of it there. And I just shoot these things. I put them up online. Um, I license them to require attribution only. And that's just so I know they get used. Um, but I would love them to be contributed to maps um, in some way. In other words, I'm wondering if we can somehow open source the um, contribution of aerial photographs to, to maps of some kind. It occurs to me that nobody's shooting straight down from above. You're always shooting at an angle. It's probably hard to get, to get the geometries right. Um, but I'd love to see that happen. Even if it's, um, uh, you know, you know, you're going to, um, rural Utah to, and to canyons and things where there's not only no cell coverage, but you can use the, you can use, um, uh, you can use organic maps, but you get, well, here's some photos of that are of these places shot from above, right? Is that plausible? Is that something that might be interesting? I'm just curious. This is one of the ways that I could contribute if, if there was a possibility. Yeah, absolutely. It's possible. And OpenStreetMap uh, has a sub project uh, to uh, improve uh, quality of map data by using uh, Photography, I, I, I photography from planes you mentioned. So this project exists. You can contribute actually, uh, contribute your photos, and uh, people try to join uh, photos together, try to fix geometry, and try to use this information to improve mapping. So satellite images. This is one source of information. Uh, you photos from plane. This is another source of information. You can improve digitization of the map by using photos from the plane. This already exists. I can share the link. I just noticed that, you know, putting in our own per- private chat, there is a vertical aerial photographs in openstreetmap.org. There's a, in their wiki, yeah. there is something about that. So that's good. Um, and I'll have to read through that. I hadn't, I haven't looked at that in years. Um, a, 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 an irrelevant, but interesting story is that when, I started doing this. I had a little GPS. There was a Bluetooth one. It had a little battery. It little charge it up, and I jammed it in the window of the airplane behind the shade so they wouldn't see it. And it was connected by Bluetooth to uh, uh, to a, I don't know some kind of offline map on on a on a tablet. And because it only understood roads, it showed me going down little roads at 500 miles an hour <laughs> because it thought I was on the ground. It was kind of while watching this map kind of kind of jerk itself around so, so I, I use gps yeah. i use gps and planes uh, so on android phones it usually works if you have uh, if you sit near a window mm-hmm. you just need to wait some time you need to wait maybe 10 minutes uh, to get satel- satellites uh, signal acquired but it usually works in planes uh, on iphone i don't know why it probably it's, I saw, I saw one time. I gotta say, yeah. it's not good. I want yeah. to do it. It usually works. So uh, you can open any map application, organic maps, or any other application, and you can see where you are. So you can track the flight. Uh, I, I've noticed with, um, I don't know why, on an iPad, it would work, work better than an iPhone. And I didn't think an iPad would have a better GPS in it. But I carry a Garmin GPS with me mm-hmm. um, pretty much everywhere. And, um, really in the last 15 years or so that those have become really sensitive. So often you don't even need to be next to the window to get, uh, uh, to be able to see, you know, six or eight satellites enough so they can, you know, triangulate or quadrangulate or quintangulate, whatever it is, your location. Um, but the, but my, I hold my iPhone up to the window and it gets nothing, even with apps that can show you the satellites or close to nothing. It just isn't very good. 
And I'm, I'm wondering I why they don't you. make them any better. Uh, yeah, I can tell you a secret. Uh, so if you use your device very often, your device, uh, Garmin or Android phone, it has satellite database up to date. Because, uh, you know, satellites are moving uh, in different directions. Right, and right. Uh, if you, when you connect to the internet, if you do it once per day, uh, even once per week, you get the latest information about uh, GPS satellites. And if you have this database up to date, you can acquire GPS signal in a couple of minutes. If you don't have this database up to date, it can take a couple of hours. So GPS is fully passive. So if you go to open air without any roof and wait, uh, I don't know, 40 minutes, uh, one hour, you will get your GPS uh, signal sooner or later. Uh, but if you update this database periodically, it will take a couple of minutes. So to get good signal. That's interesting because I noticed with the Garmin, like sometimes that I have to restart it in a plane. It, that usually takes about five minutes before it gets all the satellites. Mm -hmm. um, and and it does seem to know something about the vectors of the different satellites. This one, you know, satellite 14 is going northeast and satellite 56 is going southeast. And um, it's, it's very interesting to know that your location is actually being calculated by your device is not by the satellites at all. The satellites are just beacons, you know, so it knows who the yep. beacons are and, uh, and figures it out on your phone, uh, or not, or, or on your, on your, on whatever your handheld device is. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that there ought to be, it all, it all ought to be improving a lot. So I'm wondering where, cause we've got just a few minutes left here where, where, I mean, you have so many, uh, relationships with people. Um, where do you see this going in the next year, two years, whatever? So we are ramping up. Uh, we participate in Google Summer of Code uh, second second year in a row. So we got four contributors, four students uh, to work on the project. Uh, so it sounds crazy, right? So you work on a privacy focused application, uh, but you, you get support from Google actually. Why not? So because this is open source and uh, we are fully liable to participate in the program. Uh, so talking about general directions, uh, we have a lot of things to do. Like uh, currently this is offline maps and uh, to get offline maps, uh, we download OpenStreetMap data and we process OpenStreetMap data. So we pack OpenStreetMap data in special way uh, to work fast on your devices, and it all takes time. So currently we do updates uh, every two weeks, sometimes every three weeks. And one of the features we are working on, weekly updates, maybe daily updates. Maybe we can get uh, this level, not now, sometime later. Because OpenStreetMap uh, database, uh, it's really complex structure. If you want to be power efficient, you need to do some preparation, some processing of data. Uh, we are working on navigation site, uh, improving navigation for cycling, uh, hiking. Uh, we are working on different layers for hiking. Like you can see different view of the map, different objects depending on your map style. Uh, we are working on improving OpenStreetMap editor because uh, organic maps uh, has very basic OpenStreetMap editor. So you can add uh, some objects, but uh, it's not possible to add a road, for example. So we can improve editor to get uh, more contributions from the people. Uh, people ask us about offline search, improve offline search, you know, especially search by address. Uh, in North America, we don't do a good job uh, because uh, different style of addresses uh, from Europe and uh, Asia. So we are working on improvement of our algorithm. Uh, so it's like a Google, you know, you type uh, something in your search, search box and we need to recognize what is it. Is it a city name or a street name or name of some uh, object like market or gas station, whatever. So this is uh, Big job, do all things uh, Google does online, but on your device. Talking about open source projects, so we are talking about open source here, right? So talking about open source projects, we are trying to get more contributors. This is not necessarily cold contribu contributions. Uh, 
So if you can uh, write Android code or IS code or C++, uh, yeah, please, please contribute. But we also have other, other areas where people can contribute. For example, translations. We support, uh, we support almost 40 languages in the application. And this is a challenge. 40 languages, this is a total challenge because, you know, yeah. it's different structure, different languages. Bug testing, just send it reports, it helps the project. So if you see some problems, please press a button. We, sp we especially uh, made this button visible on the map. So you press the button and send bug report. Uh, map styling and uh, map data, you can contribute to OpenStreetMap. Draw your neighborhood at uh, objects and it will help the project. So we have thousands of uh, issues uh, on GitHub. We are working on fixing uh, things people, our, our users ask us. Uh, we're improving this client. Uh, that's it, basically. You know, modern map applications uh, have a lot of features. So we started from uh, tourist audience, mostly. Tourist audience, uh, some weekend trips, uh, but we are moving more to general purpose application. For general purpose application, you need a lot of things. For example, public transport, people ask for public transport uh, yeah. every day. Satellite images. Uh...